Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Revelation 12 verse 10. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. So this one's going to be slightly different. It's a bit of a question and answer um, share, but still very much a daily share because I'm still addressing all the issues and all the questions that we all come up with. Again, this is in response to a question posed by one of the listeners saying, um, basically, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. These may not have been the words that they used precisely, but the question is, why, why have I been saved for so long? And yet I still see... Uh, a lot of struggle in my life basically and these are questions we've all asked ourselves myself included Um, and these are questions we may sort of be looking to men and women of God to answer and we're saying but why is this happening why are Christians still suffering why are Christians still struggling why are, are Christians still bound by demons because clearly we see that happening and it sometimes it doesn't quite go hand in hand with what the man or woman of God is saying um, and so the question is, why is that? Um, uh, while uh, this is not meant, this is this by no means um, sort of disagrees or um, contradicts anything, you know, men and women of God may have taught you in the church. Obviously, I'm only referring to true men and women of God. Any false preachers, um, you know, I, I have no, I have no. I have no mercy on, I have no um, kindness for, not that I would point them out and say so-and-so is a false teacher, no. Um, I'm, I'm just pointing sort of to the fact that, you know, there are things we've been told, myself included, by men and women of God, that no, once you've been saved, then that's it, you are you are free, you, li- you live a good life for the rest of your life. And do you know what? This question meant a lot to me because I remember in a church that I once attended, I used to be, I was serving in the department of sort of welcoming first timers and um, particularly, you know, working with people who had just given their lives to Christ. And looking back now, um, I, I remember thinking a few months ago, I remember thinking that, you know, Jesus said we must calculate the cost, the cost. Jesus said that uh, he who follows me must carry his cross and follow me, right? Th- that's a metaphor. Even the, the, the parable of ca- or the teaching about calculating the cost is a metaphor. What does that mean? Jesus said, when you decide to follow him, you need to be absolutely clear of what's going to lie ahead of you. He, he did say in this world, you will have tribulation. In fact, that was my last share. The, the previous share, please go back to the last share, which was yesterday's share. Um, the, the, the very words of Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. Okay, but he said, take heart, I have overcome the world, right? Meaning, um, yes, you've given your life to Christ, but that doesn't mean you're not going to have problems, contrary to what some men and women of God may say. And I I do believe they say that based on a certain context, Um, uh, but I'm not going to speak to that right now. Um, All I can say is, if Jesus said in this world you will have trouble, there's nothing more to say. He he, he did say, he pointed it out, and he said... um, calculate the cost and then he gave an example of when you when you have a building project you always sit down and calculate how many how much resources you're going to need and how much the, the whole project is going to cost you you work out how long the project's going to take you don't set out to build a house without even planning how, which contractor you're going to hire how much they're going to cost you do all the research you do all the calculations you sit down you plan the project before you actually start the project right He said that about following him. And so when we welcome first timers, when people give their lives to Christ, when you when you minister the word of God to someone and they decide to give their life over to Jesus, what do we tell them? Do we tell them, oh, my gosh, this is it now. Your life is going to be amazing from now on, because that's not true. And we know, guys. That is not as smooth. It is true that your life will be good if you, there's a condition to that. If you stick to the word of God, if you dwell in the word of God. But, uh, you know, unless you actually make that clear to the first timer, that there's a chance and it's happened over and over again. There's a chance that, um, you know, the people who come to Christ for the first time, once they are promised that once you're in Christ, things are going to go smoothly for you. And after six months, they see that things, in fact, things may get worse for them, to be honest, because some of these, uh, some people who give them their life to Christ are in deep bondage. And once they start talking about Jesus, the, the demons that hold them captive start fighting even harder than they did before. 
So you, you need to understand in some cases, we're actually putting people in danger because we're not explaining to them what's happening in the spirit realm, right? And this is what I want to talk about that, you know, it, it is possible for you to give your life to Christ. But if you haven't renounced everything you were involved in before that day, you're going to see hell because those demons are going to fight tooth and nail to keep you. Again, I always give reference to um, Satanists or former Satanists who have, who have been won over back to Christ or former occult, um, you know, people who are involved in the occult who have come over to Christ. They always say that the deliverance was a hard fight. Guys, life is a warfare. Here's the scripture again right here. We, we always take it back to the word of God. So in yesterday's share, we read the scripture that said, um, in this world, you will have tribulation. In this world, you will have trouble. And here again, now look at what the accuser, look at what our enemy does. This is what our enemy does, guys. Um, it says, I heard a loud voice. It says at the end, the accuser who accuses the brethren day and night. You need to understand the devil is watching you. He is watching you like a movie. This is all he does 24-7. He sends monitoring spirits. He sends, don't think for a second that you live your life on your own. Even if you isolated yourself in a glass bubble somewhere, in a glass building, and sealed and shut all the doors down so no one could come in, you need to understand that there are always, spirits are all around us and spirits are observing us all the time. And they report back to their master. There's a very clear vi vision and there's a very clear um, a, you know, life, I'm not even going to call it a summary. Your life plays out right in front of these demons. Everything you do, they keep on record. Everything you say, they keep on record. That's why when you repent, you disappoint them. Because all those little things you do and say, every time you gossip about someone, every time you, you, you know, you express an angry, an angry thought, sometimes you may think that you can get away with thinking things in your thoughts even. And Jesus did say, God did say that, what whatever a man thinks in his heart so so is he so we're not even we're not fooling anyone when we think we can think things in our hearts and and no one will find out but but then suppose you even did keep those things in your heart eventually you're going to speak those things out because the bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks whatever's in your heart is going to come out one day right so if you pretend to be nice to someone but you really hate them deep down one day one day your words will come out to them. That's if God doesn't even reveal in a dream to that person that, hang on, be careful of that person. He really hates you, though he's pretending to love you, right? So the point being, guys, our lives, are they are very clear. They are very clear before forces of darkness. Why? Because they take that information and they take it before God. But at the same time, this is good news because that means they can't do anything to you unless they've had permission from God. But they take everything you do everything you do they take it before god and they present it before god and they say oh okay look at what they did to job god said have you seen have you considered my job my son job and the devil said oh of course i've considered of course but what, what do you expect him to be god was being proud of job and god and, and satan said well of course you, you'd be proud of him because he does nothing but worship you because you protect him if he didn't protect him he would curse you right so, that it, so it, it, even God said, have you seen Job? And, and yes, Satan had seen Job. And Satan had realized that I, I can't touch this Job because God has protected him. God has a hedge of protection around him. Go to Job chapter 1 and read that first chapter. And you'll see the conversation between God and Satan. The point being, guys, we need to understand that we are constantly in spiritual warfare. In fact... If in fact, guys, in fact, if anything, we are there's more warfare when you give your life over to Christ than before you give your life over to Christ. Why? Because every spirit that had you in bondage before you gave your life to Christ, they are fighting to get you back. They are fighting to keep you in bondage. And I was saying that Satanists always testify that the, the deliverance is the hardest part. In fact, some people don't even make it. Some people actually die. These demons kill them because they'd rather kill them and take them to hell with them than let them, you know, than let them actually achieve that deliverance and make it to heaven. Because the whole point, guys, is so that they can take you to, down to hell with them. Entities of darkness, demonic powers, demonic spirits are headed for hell. They are going to be, ultimately, they're going to hell. There's no repentance for them. Unlike you and me, we get to repent. We get to start over. We get to go back to God. So you can live a crazy life, a very crazy, um, sinful life. But if, if, you know, if God gets to you on time, you, you're blessed.
if God gets to you on time, meaning um, it is possible that even you might not have the patience and the endurance to fight to go back to God. But if those demons don't kill you before you repent, there's a chance that you're going to repent and go back to God. Hence the story of the prodigal son. It is possible to change your mind and say, no, I'm going back to my father. This life of sin isn't working for me and it doesn't work. Because it doesn't work, guys. No matter what the devil gives you, he can give you all the wealth in the in the world. You, it doesn't work. You are not designed to work in the kingdom of God. Anyway, I digress. Now, the, back to the question, um, you know, why am I still struggling in life even when I'm saved? It could be for a number of reasons. It could be generational cases that haven't been addressed. I, after working with God, in fact, from a very young age i i loved god i loved the bible i prayed i fasted i did all this and all that the other but the, the truth is there were generational cases that existed in my life that i didn't address i've only just addressed them last year how old am i 40 i've only just addressed them last year right so meaning yes there were times when i prayed and fasted to get certain things because god will respond to that it says um seek ye first the kingdom of god and all these things shall be added unto you so when you're about to apply for a job seek the kingdom of god go on prayer and fasting and say father there's a i'm applying for this job and 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 as you go through the whole process of applying for the job seek his kingdom seek him seek him ask god to help you he'll help you even as cursed as you are with generational curses right at the end of the day god is still there for all of us the sinners and the non-sinners if you engage in his principles so there's a principle of seeking first seek ye first the kingdom of god and and all these things shall be added unto you that's a principle it works that way if you seek the kingdom of god whatever you're asking for will be added to you but first seek god right and and come before him and say father i come to you with this job opportunity um and i pray that you help me even from the application process to the interview process and hopefully i'll get it if you don't get it and you have sought god then that's good because then god is saying no he's seen something he doesn't want you to engage in, in that job and is 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 making you stay out of that job right um but the point bottom line is guys even in that time when i was praying and 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 fasting and i got wonderful results my 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 first of exams gcse exams or o-level exams i got straight a's right that was only through god there was no way i could have achieved that outside of god but i still had generational cases so now you might be saying yeah but god blessed you even with generational cases yes he did because i specifically asked him for certain things in my life and every time i asked him for something he gave it to me right because i sought him first so i followed his law but the the, the, the generational cases still had to be addressed and so you go back and you you ask God to show you where's the error, Father, where's the problem. God will start to, you'll bring the right teachers to you. He'll bring the right, somehow things will come to you. Information will come to you through teachers, through revelation. These thoughts will just come to your mind. God will lead you. Seek him. Go to Jeremiah 33 verse 3, right? Where he says, come unto me and I will show you great and unsearchable things you do not know there's just information no matter how learned you are there are certain things you'll never know unless god reveals them to you and so it's the same here why are you struggling even though you are saved right even though you be you know you speak in tongues you do all these things in church and yet you are you're, you're, you're returning tithe and, and it's not nothing is is showing okay I, I could go into tithe itself right now but that because that's a whole topic in itself but i'm going to also encourage you to first and foremost give to the poor okay there, there's a great teacher called kevin ewing who teaches about this thing please find him on youtube he teaches about tithe he teaches about giving to the poor just go to that okay so, so there's a whole combination of different things happening here. But as far as just ease in life, just what you're going through in life is concerned, it's simple. Here's the verse. The enemy accuses us. He is the accuser. He accuses the brethren day and night. So he takes before God everything you've done wrong, all the unrepentant sin. Once you repent, you can't do anything with that information. But if there's any sin you're committing secretly or openly, right, um, he takes it before God and he accuses you before God. And when you don't repent, the, the law of God is the law of God and it stands. And, and if you don't repent, that the, that same devil devil then has the legal right to torment your life, right? Where did he get the legal right from? The legal right comes from the law of God. It comes from God. If you're not repenting of your sin, you really do suffer. Sin does lead to death, okay? So what you need to do is you need to be repenting. But more to the point, find the deeper meaning be behind the struggle in your life. There could be generational curses that have not been addressed 
and also those cases could not necessarily be generational they could be cases that you've incurred by yourself due to things you've done and whatever and i know this isn't exciting to hear that maybe you've done something wrong no that that's not the point of this the point of this is just to show you because god has made a way out of every situation so the point is set yourself and if you're seeing that this is a pattern whatever you're going through is a pattern right it's repeating itself all the time then there's definitely a, a curse going on there take it before god repent sometimes you even repent before you even know what you've done wrong it's always a good idea to repent start from your forefathers and say father i repent of of every sin my forefathers committed and i renounce and denounce every iniquity and abomination they took part in i i give my life to you i want to live my life according to your law so i break myself away from everything that's been passed down from my forefathers uh, through, from my bloodlines because your bloodlines your relatives may be doing things that are sinful before god and that affects you you know all those things affect us Everything we do affects our future. It may, because everything we do is either for God or against God. And if it's for God, then it brings blessings. If it's against God, it, it brings curses. And sometimes we do these things without even realizing. Sometimes we do them because we just lead these lives where we're carefree. And no one is really pointing us that, for example, that the way we are living our lives is causing curses in our lives. Um, it may not be something absolutely horrible, but it may still be things, you know, things that are, um, you know, um, you know, th that God that are not right before God. So we need to be aware. And sometimes even the environment or the, the culture that we live in, what we are doing is completely acceptable. For example, I live in a part of the world where it's absolutely acceptable to live with a, a man or with a woman um, outside of marriage. It's, you know, no one really, it, it's culturally, it's not frowned up, upon. Whereas before this, I lived in a different part of the world in Africa where that kind of thing would have been, what, what are you doing? You're not even married to this guy and you're living with him. But in this part of the world, it's absolutely normal, right? Nobody, nobody really cares. But the truth is that before God is can cause you problems because what you're doing is you are you you it's basically you are living with someone outside of marriage and so there's all sorts of spiritual implications and again this is not meant to judge or to make you feel bad and to say oh okay so that means you know i'm living a life of sin the truth is if it's not right before god it's just not, god's favor is not going to work it's not going to come to you um, because again, you have an accuser who's constantly pointing out before God and saying, oh, really? Are you blessing him? Even though he's committing this sin, he's constantly fornicating and living with a, 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 a woman he doesn't even choose to marry. So are you really saying you're going to bless him? The accuser is there. He's constantly bringing your case before God all the time. And so it, there is a call here to live a straight life before God. Ask God to point out all the areas in your life that need to come right. And sometimes you may have to be brave and just to completely undo something you've done for maybe 20 years. You may sound crazy to people. Imagine you've been living with someone for 20 years and you never got married. And you have to turn around and say to that person, sorry, we either need to get married or we need to split up so I can live by myself. Right? Right. And, you know, it, it has to come to that because at the end of the day, you are seeking God. And if you are really, really, really pursuing God and you want his blessings and you want the benefits of, 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 of working with God, you're going to have to do things his way. Any part of your life that is compromised or breaks the law of God in any way, don't think the devil doesn't see it. He does and he takes it before God. That's why scriptures say, give, give no place for the devil. Anything you do that is contrary to the law of God. Um, you give the devil, you give the devil a place to sort of take before God and say, God, this is what your child is doing. And if you're not repenting of it or changing that situation, eventually you start to see things not working out for you. Uh, you start to see all these cases start to manifest in your life. So when men and women of God say, oh no, once you are saved, everything is smooth sailing. No, the condition is, I mean, maybe they say that because they assume you're going to live right. And as long as you're not living right before God, unfortunately, um, you know, the, the blessings of God can't manifest in your life. And so you're going to see a constant, a regular pattern of things just not working out for you. You'll be doing all the other things right, but, but there may just be one area in your life that is not right. Again, these are not exciting things to hear, but these are things I've had to be honest with myself about. There's a lot I did wrong. All these living with, a, with you know, with someone I wasn't married to, um, you know, even had a child out of wedlock and things like that. These are things I've had to own up before God and have a conversation with God and repent and use the word of God and come clean before God. God answers. Draw nearer to God and he'll draw nearer to you. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.